<laughs> okay. Well, good morning, everyone. So glad you are here to uh, join us for morning prayer. We are so excited and energized today because we got, it's like we got the band back together. We just have to get Ron back um, to, have a, to have a full roster. And we were just talking about baseball rosters. That's why that was in my head. Um, so welcome. This is our busy day here at St. Peter's. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You'll get notified when we have content posting, which will be three, three times today. Um, with morning prayer, noonday devotions, and evening prayer. Um, as well, you can also uh, check out our Facebook Live if you're watching that. Please uh, follow us and even feel free to share the resource of daily prayer with your friends and family and households and communities. We're honored to welcome you home to St. Peter's, I, albeit virtually or in person. Um, so we're very happy to be here today. This is our busy day. We have morning prayer Bible study, noonday devotions, um, afternoon meetings, evening prayer, community supper serving, and then uh, community front ministry board meeting tonight. This is the day omission um, for us here at St. Peter's. We're very excited about that. We are marking and remembering a particularly um, interesting saint today um, as we gather. And if I can close this window, I will. It's not looking like it's going to let me. So I'm going to go here. Um, so Maria Skoltsova, uh, Mother Maria of Paris, is this amazing saint in the Orthodox Church, whom we are remembering as well in the Anglican Communion today. The remarkable thing about her journey, and um, I bring her up uh, with intention, particularly in this age in which we, uh, we struggled for tolerance across lines of connection. She was born a Russian uh, noble, noble woman in Latvia. She grew up and became an intellectual and uh, after her father's passing when she was quite young, an avowed atheist, uh, eventually joining the Bolshevik party. However, she fell out with Leon Trotsky and actually tried to assassinate him um, and had to flee to a remote, a remote village where she eventually actually became the assistant mayor when the white Russians um, took the town uh, and her superior was executed. She became the mayor, but then was put on trial and uh, was saved by a sympathetic judge um, and had her sentence commuted. And they wound up marrying um, and eventually moving to Paris after the full Russian revolution took place and the Leninists overtook the Bolsheviks. <laughs> She and her husband settling in Paris um, after having moved sort of across Eastern Europe, um, having children along the way, I might add, um, uh, landed in Paris and uh, eventually um, separated. This is important because she, during the course of this journey from the time when she was the mayor of that village in Russia up until her time in Paris, had a rapprochement with Christianity, became much more engaged in, in fact, she became fascinated by theology. The study of theology was with her throughout her entire life. And so she followed along with that. Um, eventually, uh, with the guidance of her bishop in the Orthodox Church in Paris, she decided to become a uh, a nun, but she would only become a nun, she said, if she was allowed to live in the world. She didn't want to live cloistered in community. She wanted to live cut off from the world. She wanted to be a part of the world and to live in service to the poor as well as to continue her studies in theology. So the bishop allowed this. She started a small <laughs> household with some family members, a couple of uh, fellow nuns, and her father confessor. And that's important to remember her father confessor at the time. And she um, were serving the poor, and in the midst, and this is in the 1920s into the 1930s, um, and in the midst of the end of the 30s and the 40s, when Paris fell to the Nazis, um, Jewish people started showing up on her doorstep, and she and the priests started creating falsified baptism certificates so these Jewish people could avoid detection by the Nazis. Eventually, uh, the Gestapo arrested her and her father confessor, and also her son, and they were um, interred in uh, two different concentration camps 
um, her husband and her, her, I'm sorry, her, her priest and her son eventually uh, succumbed in the in concentration camp. Um, and sadly, she was gassed in 1945. But as a member of the French resistance, as a passionate socialist, as an incredible figure with regard to service to the poor, she is commemorated and really memorialized in the Orthodox Church. She's one of the, one of the Hall of Fame saints, if you will. Um, among those. So Laura, did I catch all the, all the bases or did I miss anything along the way? Well, the, one of the things um, that, thought, that struck me the most, and I'll, if, if we can go back, when she was a child at seven, she asked, could she be a nun? Oh, okay. She, she was very devout as a child. And then when her father died, it broke her. And um, she, that's, that's when she lost God for a while. While in Paris, um, she opened up her home to Russian expatriate women and they could stay with her uh, for a while until they got their feet back on their feet. Um, eventually they opened up ha other houses for families and for men. But what reminded me of that story opening her house and feeding and sheltering uh, these, these women reminded me of Becca Stevens and the work at Magdalene House, that uh, you come and everyone is welcomed and you, you stay until you, you are healed in, in Becca Stevens, it's, it's a two year program. But I wondered if, if the seeds of Mother Maria, uh, if that was the seeds of Magdalene House. Oh, I love that image. Thank you. It's a great image. So S Sister Maria of Paris, or Mother Maria of Paris, we remember. And uh, Laura made a comment before we started the broadcast that, that it's, it's how, she asked me how deep did I have to go into the photo archives on the interwebs to find a photo of her smiling. It was actually only about three or four deep um, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. finding one, because most of the time she's depicted quite somberly um, in, uh, in her habit uh, either in this traditional Russian Orthodox habit or in a simpler, uh, in a simpler one that, that doesn't have the cone, uh, the cone headpiece. Um, and she's sitting there with her hands folded in her lap and her glasses on, looking quite implacable. But in this one, um, you see a very accessible person and, and I appreciate that one. So here we go, guys. Um, we are all set and uh, we are ready to go. I will hand this over. You won't hear from me again until the end because of the many wonderful people <laughs> we have here on the Zoom broadcast today and uh, very excited to see everyone here. So for now, enjoy. Well, good morning, everybody. It is, it is so good to be together in, in person on Zoom and in a virtual community. Welcome to morning prayer. If you are watching on Facebook and have intercessions to share, please add them to the comment box now and we will uh, pray them live when the time comes. If you are on, on YouTube, also please add your intercessions in the comments and we will read them at the next office tonight at five o'clock for evening prayer. And if you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications so you can uh, here you can know when we have new content and on facebook start a watch party tell all your friends that we are here uh, monday through thursday morning prayer and evening prayer so having said all that morning prayer let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight O lord my strength and my redeemer let us confess our sins against god and our neighbor most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me for the antiphon and invitatory. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. <clears throat> Our psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 119. I will read with the odd verses. Please respond with the even. Remember your word to your servant in which you have made me hope. This is my comfort in my distress, my distress that your promise your gives me life. The arrogant utterly deride me, but I do not turn away from your law. When I think of your ordinances from of old, I take I comfort in the Lord. Hot indignation seizes me because of the wicked, those who forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs wherever I make my home. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and keep your law. This blessing has fallen to me, for I have kept your precepts. The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I implore your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think of your ways, I turn my feet to your decrees. I hurry and do not delay to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your law. At midnight, I rise to praise you because of your righteous ordinances. I am a companion of all who fear you, of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O oh Lord, is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. You have dealt well with your servant, O oh Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was humbled, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The arrogant smear me with lies, but with my whole heart, I keep your precepts. Their hearts are fat and gross, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was humbled so that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the first book of Samuel. When Abigail saw David, she hurried and alighted from the donkey and fell before David on her face, bowing to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, upon me alone, my Lord, be the guilt. Please let your servant speak in your ears and hear the words of your servant. My Lord, do not take seriously this ill-natured fellow Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your servant, did not see the young men of my Lord, whom you sent. Now then, my Lord, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, since the Lord has restrained you from blood guilt and from taking vengeance with your own hand, now let your enemies and those who seek to do evil to my Lord be like Nabal. And now let this present that your servant has brought to my Lord be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your servant, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord is fighting the battles of the Lord, and evil shall not be found in you so long as you live. 
if anyone should rise up to pursue you and seek your life, the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living under the care of the Lord of your God. But the lives of your enemies shall sling out as from the hollow of a sling. When the Lord has done my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has appointed you prince over Israel, my Lord shall have no cause of grief or pangs of conscience or having shed blood without cause for having saved himself. And when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your servant. David said to Abigail, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you to meet me today. Blessed be your good sense and blessed be you who have kept me today from blood guilt and from avenging myself by my own hand. For surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, who has restrained me from hurting you, Unless you had hurried and come to meet me, truly by morning there would be, not have been left to Nabal so much as one male. Then David received from her hand what she had brought to him. He said to her, go up to your house in peace. See, I have heeded your voice and I have granted your petition. Abigail came to Nabal. He was holding a feast in his house like a feast of the king. Nabal's heart was merry within him for he was very drunk. She told him nothing at all until the morning light. In the morning, when the wine had gone out of Nabal, his wife told him these things, and his heart died within him. He became like a stone. About ten days later, the Lord struck Nabal, and he died. When David learned that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord who has judged the case of Nabal's insult to me, and has kept back his servant from evil, the Lord has returned the evil doing of Nabal upon his own head. Then David sent and wooed Abigail to make her his wife. When David's servants came to Abigail at Carmel, they said to her, David has sent us to you to take you to him as his wife. She rose and bowed down with her face to the ground. She said, your servant is a slave to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. Abigail got up hurriedly and rode away on a donkey. Her five maids attended her. She went after the messengers of David and became his wife. David also married Ahinoam of Jezreel. Both of them became his wives. Saul had given his daughter Michal, David's wife, to Palti, son of Laish, who was from Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle this morning is Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah. Together, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But Jews came there from Antioch and Iconium and won over the crowd. Then they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples surrounded him, he got up and went into the city. The next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. After they proclaimed the good news to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystria, then on to Iconium and Antioch. There they strengthened the souls of the disciples, encouraged them to continue in the faith, saying, it is through many persecutions that we must enter the kingdom of God. And after they appointed elders for them in each church with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the Lord in whom they had come to believe. Then they passed from Pisidia and came to 
Pamphylia, when they had spoken the word in Perga and then went down to Atalia. From there, they said, sailed back to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had completed. When they arrived, they called the church together and related all that God has done with them and how he opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there with the disciples for some time. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our, our second canticle this morning is Canticle 21, You Are God. Together. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at, the, at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your grant salvation. Us your salvation. Lord, your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in only you, you can we live, live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Saving health, saving health from all the nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope, the of, hope of the poor be taken, be taken away. away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Spirit. O creator and giver of life, who crowned your martyr, Maria, with the glory and gave her an example of service to the suffering and poor even unto death. Teach us to love Christ in our neighbors and thereby battle injustice and evil with the light of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God and glory everlasting. Amen. And yes, I skipped her name because I wasn't going to butcher it. She, she deserves better than me. Skoltsova. Thank you. Heavenly Father. In you, we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Please join me for a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, <clears throat> pardon me, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We pray for all those affected by wildfires out west. We pray for those who are affected by the smoke from the wildfires across the country into Canada. We pray for those affected by the flooding in Germany and Belgium. And we give thanks today for the wedding anniversary of Megan and Jeremy. Give thanks for the kids who earned really good scores on the AP exam and that they'll just use it to go on to bigger and better things. Praise for Anne Marie, who has a job interview today. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life giving spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you and holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be, to God. God. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. That, uh, that concludes morning prayer this morning. And uh, as we said, this is our busy day. We are gathering in a few minutes at 10 o'clock for Bible study. We will be back at uh, noon for Noonday Devotions on Facebook. Uh, a couple of meetings this afternoon, 5 o'clock evening prayer, 5.30 uh, car side delivery of our community supper. And later this evening, the uh, Community of Hope Ministries um, board meeting. There you go. If you, are liking, if you are on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. Tell all your friends so they can do the same. And on Facebook, uh, 
click the following button so you also get notifications. And uh, I'm gonna go grab a cup of coffee and get to our day. So have a good day, everyone. We'll see you, see you soon. Bye-bye. Take care and God bless. Bye. Bye.